Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, welcoming Troy Garrity to Behind the Velvet Rope. We are talking about one of my favorite shows, HBO's Ballers, every Sunday on HBO at 10 o'clock. He's also got a great new movie out called The Brooklyn Banker. Check it out. All right, guys, so one of my favorite shows on the planet is HBO's Ballers. And I think Troy Garrity, who's our next guest, has like my dream life because he plays an agent for high-powered athletes. I'm so excited to have him here. Yo, man, your last episode, I was just telling you, I'm like, that's not acting. Like, he's like, I'm with a naked woman, I'm busy, call you back. I'm like, that's my dream job. You uh, have it. Be careful what you <laughs> dream for because it's not all that it shakes out to be on TV. It's, you know, these agents, they get put through the grinder, as you're going to find out on the next episode of Ballers. I'm trying to scout a player from Florida State, and he's disappointed that I haven't brought him a satchel of money or a free car, so he leaves me in the middle of the Everglades to, like, fight off alligators and Burmese pythons and fight my way out. It's, so every now and then, you know, you get the company of a beautiful woman, but most days you're negotiating hell. You've been doing this for a long time. When you get a role like this, this has got to be so much fun because, like, this is what we boys dream of doing. Like, everybody wants to be that super high-powered agent. You get to work with The Rock, who's like, we were just talking about the hardest working man in show business. It's got to be like a dream role for you, right? It is a dream role. It really is. And also HBO, they take such good care of their artists. And everyone uh, uh, on board of Ballers has, like, such a... Uh, a shared vision and good times. You know, and most of the people on the show, it's either their first job or they were actually athletes. So we don't spend our time like being Hollywood divas. We spend our time talking about fantasy football and sports and it's great. When you look at what ballers represents, obviously everybody, like I'd mentioned, we all want to be that rich athlete. This is like the show that we get to really see what it's like. How accurate is ballers to what it really is like to be an athlete? Well, to a degree, it's pretty accurate. You know, what's interesting about the show is we can read about all the sensationalized stories on TMZ or, or hear whatever blog, but the show is really about, well, what's the consequences? And, you know, what led up to this problem and how do we fix this problem? Or how do we create, uh, you know, success for somebody? And the transactional nature, nature of the show is... I think what's very interesting. The Rock, man. You and I were just talking about Dwayne. Holy cow, this guy. You were telling a great story about the guy just doesn't sleep, right? It's crazy. Well, he sleeps a little <laughs> bit, but you know, he his work ethic has really set a tone on set. There would be days that he literally didn't sleep and he comes to set, you don't hear him complain, he doesn't yawn, he never raises his voice, he always knows his lines. So it sets a tone for everybody to follow. And you know, he's incredibly talented. And this season, or the show, but this season in particular, uh, you, we're really going to see other parts of Dwayne that, that I don't think the public has seen before. So I'm very excited to see how people <laughs> respond. The final episode of season two is either going to get Dwayne a whole bunch of new fans <laughs> or end or his career. Lose <laughs> a lot of fans. One way or the other, you know, Dwayne always goes 110% in everything that he does. And, uh, this season's finale uh, uh, continues that track record for him. So you're in New York. We were just talking about you had a premiere last night. You've got a movie here. It's pretty cool. Tell me all about The Brooklyn Banker. I did The Brooklyn Banker um, in August in Williamsburg. Uh, it's a 1973 uh, gangster film in polyester in 90 degree weather. Oh my God. And it was like the battle of the Schwitzi. So you watch the film and you just constantly, everyone's like wiping their face n nonstop. Um, it's a fun, not fun. It's a good, good film um, about. I play a, a neighborhood banker who's cursed with. Well, it's a blessing and a curse. He has f a photographic memory. Okay. And the local mob boss wants to use that talent to his own benefit. And it's about me trying to do the right thing, um, you know, and not be manipulated by the mafia. When you get to do all right, so Ballers hit TV show. It's killing it on HBO, and then you're doing a movie like this. What do you enjoy more? Like, what, it, 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 what's the process? What's the enjoyment level? Like, wh which one's more, like,
gets you, your blood going. Well, they both do in different uh, ways. You know, as an actor, you always feel like, well, there's more to me than just this character. Like, yeah, Jason Antolotti on Ballers is part of me, but also is this guy Santo Bastucci in The Brooklyn Banker. So it's about the joy of uh, exploring different parts of who yourself, who you are. And uh, both characters are like totally opposite. So that, I, I really enjoy that. Also in The Brooklyn Banker, you know, it's sort of, I call it the, it's the movie about the unsung uh, Italian-American actor. Everyone in the film is uh, these Italian actors who aren't usually on the posters or they have one line or their background extra tough guy in this mafia movie or this urban movie. And in this, they all really get to shine. You know, one actor in, in particular, Carmine, Carmine uh, Raspoli, he immigrated to New York in 1970 from Naples. He took a boat. The boat landed him on 60-something in, in Manhattan. And his father and his, uh, took him to Brooklyn with his seven sisters, and he was going to help be the man of the family and get a job. But he really wanted to act. And his father was like, well, you can't, you, you, you know, there's no place for a man in acting. You have to get a job, you know, laying bricks or whatever it was. Um, he didn't speak English, he spoke Italian, he got beat up every day at school because of it. And he said, enough is enough. And he joined an acting school in New York. And he met somebody who said, I want to translate all the great American plays into Italian and have you and the Italian actors go perform them in the Italian neighborhoods in Brooklyn. And so that's what he did and that's how he found his passion. So there's people like that all throughout this film, which was directed by uh, Federico um, Castellucci, I know I mispronounced it. <laughs> he was famous from playing Fury yeah, of course. Sopranos. So there's this great group of actors and authenticity that, that is really makes the film special. I think he's a big art collector too, by the way. Like, he's not a, just a big art collector. He is a world-renowned painter. Right. I was. He's always, by the way, how crazy, Furio, Mr. Hitman himself, is like always in page six about this art he's stuff. He's a and I'm bohemian like, artist. Everyone's <laughs> like, you're a gangster. And he's like, I prefer pink to blue. You know, he's like... You, you and I were just joking around. Your mother, I've interviewed her 15 times. His mother is Jane Fonda, one of the greats of all time. When you, it, does it automatically make you want to get into the business when your mother is Jane Fonda? No, I think probably the opposite. I, want, I sort of rejected it. I wanted, to be, <laughs> I wanted to be a painter, much like Federico. Um, but I, I grew up at a summer camp where we would perform plays, but it was never anything um, career-oriented. And uh, someone said to my mom, you know, he could, he could, um, he's got it. He could do it if he wanted to. And she told me that. So it was in my brain, but I never wanted to. But the, I guess the fact that my mother and my grandfather and my uncle and my cousin were all actors, it was uh, an option for me. You know, a lot of people who are far more talented than I am uh, would be probably much greater actors than me, except it just wasn't, that wasn't something that was in their wheelhouse. You know, their, their parents and family members around them, you know, said, well, you know, let's aspire to be a doctor or a teacher. Um, so I think in, in, you know, the house I grew up in, becoming an artist was just a possibility of something that you could do. Does it make it easier in terms of career? Does it make it harder actually having that name attached? I think it's a big benefit. You know, it helps me get into the room, and I think that there's a little interest created in being the son of or the daughter of, uh, you know, another actor. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's really um, your work is going to beget work. So there's plenty of people who have, you know, used their parents' name to get into the business, and they just that doesn't pan out. It, you know, it's not easy. It's very hard. So it's There's the hardest a hardest business of, on the planet, Yeah, it's man. a lot of People rejection, and it. I've been in the grind <laughs> for a very long time, and, and um, it's just, you know, my parents instilled in me a, just a, a hard work ethic and, and that it's a marathon, not a, not a sprint. You know, in Ballers, John David Washington, who plays Richard Jarrett. Denzel's son. His, yeah, his father is Denzel Washington, and his mother's a great actress as well. Yep. Pauletta, um, and he was a pro football player. Um, for the St. Louis uh, Rams, who are now the L.A. Rams. Yep. And, you know, he, uh, you know, he 
he was he had trepidation about transitioning into acting. And, he's and, great on the show, by the way. Ricky yeah. Jarrett is the he's he the might best. Be, he and might be the, the way, funniest part of the show. He's the best, and he is the, such a good guy, you know. And and he has the same mantra like it's the same thing as football. I'm not going to be able to play unless I put in the work. So he puts in the work, and he really dedicates himself. And at the end of the day, that shows like he has so much joy for what he does because it comes from a really a pure place. We're really lucky on that show, on Ballers. It's such a great group of people. Is it blowing your mind? TV, I mean, TV is where everybody wants to be at right now. But, you know, there's only so many hit shows. There's, so many, there's only so many shows that make it. Your show's crushing it right now. So when you get to be a part of that, what's that like? Oh, it's a great, great feeling. I mean, there's a lot of instability as an actor. Yes. You, know, you think you have a good job and it goes away, or you do something great and no one sees it. Um, so to be on something that people are seeing and responding well to is a, is a great feeling. And also being on HBO, which, you know, their brand is quality content. So you know, you know, when, if they introduce a new show, I go, well, I'm going to give this a shot because they've given me so many other great stories. When you look at, wh what do you think makes Baller so good? Why do people watch it? I think people watch it because it's sort of... A, it's fun, it's pretty, but, that it is. <laughs> but it's also about the American dream to some degree. That, you know, there are real consequences here when you pursue the extraordinary. And these NFL players are pursuing the extraordinary. I mean, they, these guys work so hard. Wait, yeah, you see them on Sunday or Thursday or Monday or whatever day they're playing now. But in the off season, you know, they are, they're dedicating their lives to staying healthy, to building brain muscle, you know, neural reflex issues. Like, these guys are on another level. So, I, I don't know. I think that there's just, there's interest in, in all sorts of different facets. Um, the thing that gets me, the, why, the reason I like the show is we all know about the sensational stories of athletes getting into trouble or success stories or what have you. This show is about the transactional process behind the scenes. What leads up to that story that's in TMZ? Or how do you deal with the consequences of that? Or how do you set someone up for success? And what are the steps people are taking that leads them into failure? And you know, you think like, well, they've got it made. These guys are making so much money. And um, you know, uh, uh, what do they have to complain about? But the truth of the matter is most of the money in the league is not guaranteed. Uh, most players are, go bankrupt, or yep. they don't make any money at all. They're not educated the correctly. Career, the average career is three and a half years. So there's a very small window to succeed. And, you know, if you make a large sum of money in a brief period of time, your instinct is, well, I'm going to be making this forever. And the truth of the matter is that often doesn't happen. So, you know, yes, it's a comedy and it's fun and The Rock is like this wonderful being, but we're all existing on this you know, premise of there's real consequences to our glamour and there's real consequences to pursuing the extraordinary. And I think, in, you know, Ballers really fits into that pocket. It's sort of, people compare it to Entourage and other comedies, but it's, I think it's really sort of a new form of storytelling because, yes, it's a comedy, but there's a lot of other things going on. It's awesome, man. It's perfect. Well, he's got two great projects to check out. One is the Brooklyn Banker movie is coming out, and also HBO Ballers every Sunday at 10 o'clock. I love that show, man. And Thank you. Now, after talking to Troy, I'm like, can we get to the season finale now? I've got to see what The Rock does. It's like, so good. I can't even, like, I'm, like, thinking, what could The Rock possibly do to create this much controversy either way? And I'm like, either, you can't, it's not a naked thing. It's like, does he drop some kind of racial slur? Like, something crazy's got to happen. His character is plagued with demons, and that drives the show, and they just start to bubble up a little bit. You'll see. It's fun. It's all good fun. Where do we see Jason go from here? J I think Jason is uh, sort of tormented with, well, not yet, but he, you know, he has no personal life. It's all about his players. So he has interactions with women, but they're devoid of personality, <laughs> of, of true intimacy. He doesn't have that. He's married to his job. So I think you see Jason struggle. You, you, this season, we see how difficult it, difficult it is to sign a new player. I really get put through the ringer 
we bring in a new player this season, and uh, he tortures me. <laughs> That's awesome. Everybody check out the Brooklyn Banker and HBO's Ballers.